Welcome back everyone to another cooking episode of Northwest Fishing Secrets. Today I want to show you a super, super simple smoked salmon recipe. It's my double whiskey maple smoked salmon. I've been making working on this recipe for probably three years it's been a real hit I think you guys are gonna love it okay you can use it with a variety of smokers I personally use a Traeger but uh, let's just dig right into this I'm gonna show you the ingredients my goal for you guys is always to keep things simple the, the fishing needs to be simple and the cooking needs to be simple so ingredient wise we have it limited to just some uh, good old-fashioned brown sugar some kosher salt black pepper maple syrup and a glass of whiskey. Use some decent stuff, okay? Most importantly, we need some fresh salmon. This stuff here I caught, uh, this is some coho that I caught yesterday. So what we're gonna do for right now is just mix the dry brine together. We're gonna remove the salmon for right now and we're gonna bring in the scale and a mixing bowl. Ooh, before we do that, I'm gonna remove this little guy. You can stay right there with us. First things we're gonna do is just measure out the main ingredients, which is gonna be the brown sugar and the kosher salt. We're gonna need 1,000 grams of brown sugar, 300 grams of kosher salt, and then eight grams of the pepper. All right, there's 500 grams of brown sugar. I thought this bowl would be bigger, but it's not, so we're gonna go ahead and just do this in, in two loads. Let's get another 500. So what we're gonna do now is empty that in as well and measure out our salt. Now one thing to pay attention to is that you do wanna use kosher salt. Uh, you know, the exact reason why I couldn't tell you, it's just uh, that's something that I've learned from a lot of other experts on smoking salmon and uh, they all recommend that you go with kosher. I believe it has to do with the iodine and the other salt that you just don't want it in there. It could have some adverse effects uh, on your fish. So we're at 303 grams, that's totally fine, close enough. Let's go ahead and empty that in there as well. Boom. And uh, now all we gotta do is get eight grams of pepper. That's gonna take a little while, so I'm just gonna show you that when it's in there. All right, not sure what's going on here. For some reason that scale is not even showing one gram. We have at least five grams in there. We're gonna do a little bit more. What we're just gonna do with the uh, pepper is gonna go with uh, about one, one palm full. So that should be plenty. There we go. So that's how much pepper you'll approximately need. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that on there as well. Boom, don't worry. It, I know it looks like a lot of pepper, but it's not gonna stand out that much uh, in the end result on the fish. You're gonna be uh, rinsing off a lot of that. Ooh, look at that. That was actually exactly eight grams because this bowl here weighed 25 grams earlier. I don't know if you saw that. So that was a good guess. All right, so now all we're gonna do is go ahead and start mixing this all up until we get a nice even mixture. But before that, we just gotta have a little, mm. oh yeah, there we go, just a little refreshment. So let's go ahead and just start mixing. Yeah, when it reaches this nice and fluffy consistency right here, that's uh, when you know you're getting really, really close. Look at that, beautiful, that's just, this is it right there. That's my brine. So let's go ahead and start cutting on this puppy. So we'll, we'll, we'll start in the front here. There we go. And then what I like to do is come up to this fin right here. Do one more cut here. And then I come right behind this fin. Stay right there, little guy. 
Okay, perfect. Look at these nice little slabs of meat here. So you can see this is not a very, not a very thick fillet, okay? This is a fairly small coho. So generally, if you're smoking salmon and it's not turning out 100%, I mean, there's a million things that could be going wrong. But uh, one of the things is that maybe you're not using thick of enough of pieces of salmon. For example, uh, this front piece here always ends up being very thin there, though, depending on the way how you fillet it. So that part there is almost going to be like jerky, okay? Uh, sometimes that's, if it's fatty enough, it turns out pretty good, but sometimes that can get a little bit dry. In general, just make sure that your salmon is as thick and fatty as possible, and that's going to be a lot easier to smoke than a very thin, lean salmon. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, move in a big old dish. I'm just using a Pyrex uh, baking dish to spread out the salmon and throw that brine up on top of it. All right, here we go. So what we're gonna do first is, uh, actually we're gonna have another little, quick little refreshment. Mm. There we go, we gotta leave a little bit for cooking though too. So we're gonna take just a handful of this uh, brine mix here. There's no, no specific measurement I'm gonna give you guys. It's one thing about true cooking is don't go by the book too much, okay? You gotta vary a little bit, gotta have some fun, experiment. Don't go overboard, obviously, but uh, just right there. Just go by feel a nice, even little layer there. And then we're just gonna start uh, layering those pieces of salmon up on top, okay? All right, so we've got uh, these guys sitting over here still. It's okay if you don't get everything in on the first layer. We're just gonna throw another layer of uh, this brine on top of there, and then we'll add those next two pieces and cover those with the brine as well. So what we're looking for here is just a complete covering of the fish. All right, there we go. Looking pretty good. So now we're gonna go ahead and put on the second layer. But before we do that, remember this is a double whiskey smoked salmon. So the first uh, time the whiskey comes along is here in the brining process. So we are just going to throw a little bit. Doesn't need to be even. Oops, a glass probably isn't the best way to pour it. Just throw a little bit of whiskey on there. There we go, that's gonna go ahead and soak into that salmon real nicely. And then we will go ahead and add the uh, second pieces here. There we go. Cover those with uh, some of that brine mixture as well. There we go, and our final little soak of, uh, of whiskey. Oh, nope, not the rock, not the rock. You guys stay right in there. All right, perfect. So what we're gonna do with this now is uh, cover this with some saran wrap, and then we will place it in the fridge for about 12 to 24 hours. And what's happening here is that dry brine, the sugar and the salt is pulling some of that moisture uh, out of these fillets. Some people say it pulls a little bit of the fishiness out of it too, but you know what, if it's fresh fish, which it should be, better be, then uh, you're not gonna have any fishiness in there anyway, so uh, so that's okay. But all you want is that it just uh, extract some of that moisture, put some of the flavor in there, firms up that meat a little bit, and we will go ahead and take another look at this tomorrow, and then I'll show you the difference, uh, how it looks like then, okay? But let's go ahead and just cover that, throw it in the fridge. All right, we'll see these guys again, and uh, I'm gonna leave these in for probably about 15 hours. All right, it has been about 15 to 16 hours of this salmon brining in the fridge. Uh, as you can see, let me peel this here back, and you'll see how the moisture, remember I said that salt and the sugar was gonna pull a lot of the moisture out of the salmon? So we put on a dry brine and look how much moisture just came out of there. You can see that flowing around in there. That's a lot of water that came out of that salmon and that is a good thing. So what I'm gonna do here real quick, it's gonna get messy. I don't wanna mess up my table. I'm gonna cover this all with cardboard. Then we need to take off the excess uh, sugar and salt and pepper that's still stuck to the salmon. So the idea here is that we're just gonna take uh, pieces of this salmon out of here. You'll still have a little bit of crusted on sugar and salt and a lot of pepper on these fillets. So we're just gonna dunk them in the water here. Rinse them off real nicely. There we go. And uh, then we're just gonna lay them down here and start patting them dry. There we go. So we're gonna do that with all of these, okay? We're gonna just 
rinse off a little. Very gently, you don't need to scrub off everything. You do want a little bit of that pepper on there for flavor. There we go, so we've got it all uh, all washed. Now I just wanna make sure that this is as dry as possible. Okay, I might even use uh, multiple passes here to where this is super, super, yeah, just really dry. Um, Cause the next step is gonna be drying the salmon for probably about, you know, at least three hours uh, indoors with a fan on it, just so that it gets a nice tacky uh, texture on top, almost a little glazy. And that, that is a super important step. A lot of people think you can skip that, but uh, what this does is it creates a layer that is essentially like a moisture barrier when it is smoking. So, uh, that's what we want. We don't want all the moisture now coming out of the salmon. So that layer just keeps it right on in. It's like magic. So what we're going to do is uh, now that this is dry, set it right on top of the actual barbecue grate. I cleaned it up and uh, greased or oiled it up nicely. So, uh, so that nothing sticks, we're gonna set it on there skin side down. So I'm gonna get this all the way, put these uh, fillets or the pieces onto that, that barbecue grate. And then I am just going to set it inside with uh, just a rotary fan blowing on top of it. All right, we've got all the salmon on that tray. And yes, you did see that right. There's a little bit more salmon on there than we started with. I've actually been brining up a whole ton of it. Uh, gonna be giving a bunch to friends and family. So we've just got everything loaded on top of there and we're gonna smoke it all at once. So all of the salmon has now been brined for about, uh, like I said, about 15, 16-ish hours and patted dry or rinsed off, patted dry, put onto this uh, lightly oiled uh, barbecue grate. Again, I'm gonna be using a Traeger, so whatever smoking uh, device you're using, just get it on that tray already because once it is, we're gonna dry it now. And uh, once it's dry, you don't wanna disturb it that much more. You don't wanna break that, that nice seal that we're gonna be creating on there by drying it. So I'm gonna take this inside, uh, put it in front of a, a fan that's gonna be drying it off a little bit. So I'll show you that setup real quick and then give that about, I'm gonna give it probably three to five hours. Pro yeah, let's just say three or four hours. And then we'll throw it in the smoker and get this puppy rolling. All right, look at the setup here. We have our fan blowing onto the salmon. So what we're just looking for is we're gonna be testing throughout the process until it no longer feels slimy Instead, it's gonna feel kind of dry and tacky, and that, that, that is when you know it's done, okay? That could take one hour, it could take three hours. Like I said, some people, there's one guy, a chef that I've talked to, and he said he puts his out all day, but I would probably not recommend that. Not like it's gonna go bad, but you know, some people are more sensitive towards that kind of stuff. So let's let it dry up, and then uh, we'll see you there. Ah, the salmon is almost ready for the smoker, but then this crap started, look at this. Oh man. It is totally rainy. Luckily, I have a little little canopy from a party still out there. So we'll go ahead and just uh, use the smoker anyways. I just, my, my plugs are in the wall back here and I don't want to get anything wet. But uh, let's go ahead and show you the salmon and then start loading up this smoker. On here, and I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit more of a, uh, a glazy surface on these guys. And when you touch them, Okay, right there, there's no, no, no sticking anymore. There's almost like a little, a very thin, uh, firm surface right here. It's almost like you could see it a little bit better. And that is perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this grate out onto the grill and I'll show you how to set your uh, smoker if you're using a Traeger. All right, so the blend of wood that we're gonna use is uh, alder, cherry, and maple. Lots of maple, okay? And so we're gonna go ahead and dump that in. There we go. And then let's go ahead and turn the Traeger to the smoke setting. If you have a newer Traeger grill, then they probably got rid of the P setting on your controller down there. That was where you could adjust uh, how cool, so the, the intervals uh, that it would drop the pellets into the, the firing bowl. But that's okay, if you have one of these, it'll still work just fine. Just set it to smoke and ideally, it'll probably hover in the 150 to 180 degree range. So let's go ahead uh, per manual, open uh, this guy right here, uh, wait for it to smoke. We don't want to put the salmon on quite yet. So what's going to happen is the Traeger is going to spike up to about 280 degrees and we don't want that. That's going to be too hot for the salmon. 
Uh, we don't want to cook it, we just want to smoke it, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and let that temperature come back down and once it settles to under 200 degrees, that's where we're gonna put the salmon in. All right, look at that, we're starting to see the smoke, so then let's go ahead and close that lid and then let's just let it go through its little temperature cycle. And like I said, once it comes down to 200 or under 200, then we'll bring in the salmon. All right, so now that the smoker is at the right temperature, we're gonna go ahead and open that lid and pop in our salmon. All right, in it goes. Look at that, nice. So we're gonna leave these little guys in there for probably about two and a half hours, maybe two, two and a half hours, we're gonna check in on them, and then we're gonna go ahead and put together a little glaze in the meanwhile. That's going to be the whiskey maple syrup glaze that's gonna go on an hour before they're done. All right, so in order to make the glaze, it's super, super simple. Just uh, use your favorite type of whiskey, uh, right over here and then we're going to and then we're just going by feel okay I'm not going to tell you how much I generally just do a 50 50 mix uh, make sure you make enough to cover all your salmon and uh, and I'm just using some organic maple syrup here so we're gonna pour that in again this isn't isn't science here guys we're just going by feel there we go that's looking pretty tasty and now we're gonna take this out to the uh, the salmon and we're gonna just rub that on. Ideally, you would have a basting brush, like one of those little silicone brushes. Uh, however, I, I misplaced mine, I can't find it. So what I'm just using is a little spoon and we'll drizzle it on and rub it onto that fish and that'll work out just fine. All right, this fish has been in here now for about two and a half hours and it is late at night already now, so I'm gonna speak a little quiet. I don't wanna wake up any neighbors, but what we're gonna do is just take a little peek here. Ooh, look at that, that's starting to look really good. Mm, it smells good too. So here we've got our, uh, our brine that we just made inside, or the glaze rather. And what we're just gonna do, it's gonna be a little tedious with the spoon, with, with that brush, you could just brush it on really quickly, but I'm just gonna start uh, smothering all the, the, the fish with this here, okay? Go, just spoon it right on. So that salmon is all glazed up. We're gonna give it one more hour now and then we're gonna measure the internal temperature. And I generally like to see that it's at about 150 degrees, but uh, make sure to check with uh, whatever you feel is uh, safe for, uh, for salmon. But look at that. Mm, that is starting to look so, so delicious. All right, I went ahead and turned off the grill because the salmon is done. Look at that. Man, that is just absolutely delicious looking. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out of there and start immediately just bagging it up into some Ziploc bags and put those in the refrigerator. I generally think that the smoked salmon tastes a lot better after having been in the refrigerator for a while or just simply having cooled off from that warm temperature. It's probably best to wait until it's sat for about 12 to 24 hours uh, in the fridge because there's just so many flavors that unfold in there uh, during that period. It's a little bit of a waste to eat it right now. All right, so here is our smoked salmon. It is all done. It looks delicious and just smells so good. So I got to resist the temptation to just dig in. But uh, let me show you one of these pieces here. I'm just going to grab this big guy in the middle. Now, does that not just look absolutely amazing? Here, what I'll even do is I'll do a little little cheat for you and break a piece open oh yeah look at that that is some good stuff mm. you know what? okay fine I'll taste it it's just a little bit just a little piece here Ooh, got some bones but that's okay mm. oh wow that was amazing and if that is so good already right now 
then I can't wait to try this tomorrow. This is, oh my, it just surprises me every time how good this can be. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw these guys into uh, some big old gallon Ziploc bags. Gotta throw these big guys together. Ooh, it's still hot, but that's okay. That's how we want it. Get in there while it's nice and hot. And uh, make sure that you, if you're gonna store this stuff long-term, uh, I, I do recommend that you actually vacuum seal it with something like a food saver and then sous vide it real quick at probably, geez, 155, 160 degrees. Just uh, so if you don't know what sous vide is, you're cooking it underwater. So you've got water preset at a certain temperature, but you've got your food sealed in a vacuum sealer bag. That way you can create a sterile environment. Uh, inside that bag and store your food longer. So, uh, and, and, and just make sure that you wash your hands before doing this too, just to minimize the amount of germs. Again, if you're gonna be storing this for quite a while, I would not recommend to keep this for over, uh, you know, just a couple, maybe a week and a half or so if it's in Ziploc bags, give it 10 days. Uh, if it's, you know, sous vide, vacuum sealed, geez, I would say, I, I would give it probably at least a month, but again, what your food safety standards are will dictate uh, what you end up wanting to do. So anyways, let's go ahead and bag up the rest of this and we'll call it good. Okay, so this is all done. We've got it all bagged up. Uh, what we are going to do now uh, with the salmon is uh, seal that and I want to press out as much of the air as I can There we go, we've got the air pressed for the most part out of that. Now we're gonna set this in the fridge and just simply let that cool and it will taste absolutely delicious as of tomorrow. Now, this year really is a fishing channel, but I've absolutely enjoyed cooking for you and sharing some awesome seafood recipes as well. If you want to see uh, more fishing adventure and cooking videos for me in the future, feel free to just hit that little subscribe button down below and then hit that bell. That way you get notified on your YouTube app or on your computer uh, whenever there's a new video that comes out. I was out with some friends here yesterday and we ended up catching some fish and crabs on the boat and just cooked them right there and just had a great time. I'll link to that video here uh, in the end screen. And then I'll also have another video in the end screen where you can go ahead and see how to fillet the salmon. So I hope to see you guys for the next one. Until then, fish and cook on.